you, members. My name is Walter Bartell. I'm an engineering director at Centerpoint Energy, transmission and distribution service provider in the Houston metropolitan area. Ensuring grid security and resiliency has always been a basic tenet uh, for all utilities. Um, utilities deploy a risk-based, multi-tiered grid security philosophy um, that is often a precursor to regulation and in many cases goes well beyond the minimum requirements of regulation. Access control and detection, redundant system design, well-orchestrated response activities have proven to be sufficient strategies for localized threats. Uh, however, uh, the potential of simultaneous Targeted, co targeted, coordinated threats, as well as um, additional uh, grid security requirements from, from NERC, um, have utilities reevaluating their processes for response, as well as the implementation of new and improved technologies to enhance grid security. Geomagnetic disturbances, or GMD, are naturally occurring sustained events that could damage transformers under some circumstances. Studies in recent events demonstrate that GMD poses minimal risk to the ERCOT system. Utility participation in EPRI and DOE projects focused on the monitoring of GMD impacts predates the existing NERC GMD standard for operation. There is also a NERC standard uh, pending approval that will require system vulnerability assessments, thermal assessments of transformers, and the development and implementation of any associated action plans necessary to address identified vulnerabilities. I, I will say that preliminary assessments do indicate minimal exposure on the ERCOT system. Electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, threats could materialize as local, as local or system-wide level events. An EMP a threat uh, at the local level would be handled very much like a, a, any other local type event. Redundancy in system design would allow us to reroute power around the damaged area and proven uh, activities associated with response would speed final recovery. However, we also recognize that EMP can do uh, additional damage beyond the normal physical threats such as the uh, damage to microprocessor-based relays, other electronics, and those types of things. Uh, we've known about that for a while. We have, we have big, we've begun taking steps around that for some time. Uh, many years ago, we, tra we transitioned to an EMP-hardened protective relay. We began discussions with the manufacturer of other equipment uh, that we use in our substations around the hardening of, that, of the control aspect of those devices. Uh, we, are, we have even evaluated, or in the process of evaluating, the installation of EMP protected control houses in, in, in our substations. Remember, um, any, any other questions? Yes, sir. Just, Mr. Bartell, mm -hmm. if you were doing an audit today of the, of the survivability of the electrical grid, I don't want to talk about industry or or supply, like the electrical grid, do an audit of it. If there was a system level EMP attack today, what would you, what would be the survival of the system? A system, a system level EMP type event. Um, okay. okay. That's, that's what you're asking, right? Okay. A 10, 10 megaton weapon detonated at 150 nautical miles above northern Texas. What would be the survival of the electrical grid system? The electrical grid would survive Did, much similar to what the rest of the rest of the infrastructure would survive to. <laughs> which 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 means it really wouldn't survive at all. It would not survive. Right. But okay. you know, the, on, on your the course that you're on, you've talked about some good things. I commend you. You talked about the, the we're well aware of the new uh, the uh, hardened relays the neutral blockers and other techniques that are that are out there the, the the equipment is the technology is there and I think the industry recognizes the technology is there to significantly raise our level of protection the course that you're on so today zero survivability when if nothing else happens on what you're doing today what point in time would your answer be 75% survival. 
Well, I, I really wouldn't have a projection of that, uh, but I do believe that Mr. Carpenter will cover uh, that, that, that aspect of survivability. Do you believe there's any point in time where you would achieve 75% in our lifetime on, on the path that you're currently on? I, I just don't know the answer to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, my name is. Um, is this on? Is this on? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Carpenter. I'm the senior vice president of transmission distribution for uh, for Encore, and I'm here testifying in, uh, on behalf of ACT. Uh, the industry has fought many threat vectors for many years. Walters covered many of those. In particular, this bill covers several things, but in particular, what we're talking about today is electromagnetic pulses. And I want to separate that from this geomagnetic disturbance. The geomagnetic disturbance is this natural occurring uh, phenomena. Uh, it lasts for many hours, sometimes days, uh, and it does cause transformer heating. Uh, we've looked at this uh, and we're studying it. Standards are there. And ERCOT is in good shape as it relates to geomagnetic disturbance. Now, a high-altitude uh, electric nuclear device, if that event were to occur, it's really defined really as three pulses, uh, a very quick E1 pulse, which destroys electronics, an E2 pulse, which acts like a, uh, a surge, a lightning surge, which we're protected from, and then there's the E3 pulse, which is similar to the geomagnetic disturbance, but it only lasts for about a minute. And in that period of time, you have a very limited probability of heating up transformers to where they fail. Um, we also, in ERCOT, have relatively short lines because we're a 345 kV system. Uh, that's our highest voltage level. And we use uh, three-phase transformers versus single-phase transformers, which are more, much more susceptible to the heating effects of, uh, of those particular type of phenomena. EMP, EMP relays are what we, uh, we, we get pardoned EMP relays today, and we continue to work around fixing those particular situations. If we were to completely harden the grid, completely harden the grid, the grid would still go black because of the load rejection, the loss of load that would occur. So our focus is on recovery following an event. Mm -hmm. Recovery following event. Now, in that recovery, we're going to be dependent on the telecommunication people, the generation, the load, uh, transportation, fuel, and these sorts of things. All those things have to be there, but recovery is where we're focusing all of our efforts. We will be extremely dependent on, on many, many other uh, industries in that recovery. For instance, we may need to use the military for telecommunications assistance, especially mobile-based. And we also may need them for just purity transportation because the scenario is laid out. If it's electronic, it fries, unless it's, it's EMP hardened. This particular bill would be very cost prohibitive because the standards don't necessarily uh, apply to the facilities they're being applied to. Members, questions? Yes. yes. Uh, ask the same question. What, uh, I Unless you disagree, I'd say if we had an event today, even though you have done some things, we would have basically zero survivability of, of the electrical grid. I to, understand to, to industry be, has to be there to, to come back on. To, to be clear. Yes. And I go to all the reports, all the technical reports that yep. indicate that if we hardened 100% the electric grid, the transmission grid, if it was 100% hardened, we, the, the entire system will not survive an EMP attack. It will go black. We will go into a black start. Now it's a matter of recovering from the black start. And, and as far as, as that goes, to, today it is, it is uh, it's not near where it needs to be, Senator Hall, as, as you well know. Uh, we are on a course of action to focus on doing two things, having recoverable electronics stored appropriately and, and hardening electronics. Uh, it is impractical to think that in the near term we're going to be able to harden the system to where it's going to uh, not damage any electronics. Uh, uh, great. I don't think anybody ever expects 
we'll get to the point where the lights don't blink at all. I don't think that's what's expected. I think we're, we, we do expect to be is what we call survival. And what you talked about is going black, but not staying black, being able to restart. And that's, and, and that's part of survival. Yes, the lights may go up, but there's a big difference between the lights being out for a day, a week, even maybe a month, and then being out for a year or more. They're out for a year or more, we, we lose 90% or more of the population of the country. And so the question is, are we on a course? When we talk about how survival are we, are we on a course that in the very near future, we would be in a position to have a restart so that there would be some, some level of survivability, gr much greater than what we have today, which we all agree is zero. I believe the transmission and distribution system, and I certainly won't go into details in this forum, but I believe the transmission and distribution system is on a course to become survivable much more quickly than all those other things that have to become survivable to make the entire system work. And okay, we are on but, the course. But if you don't survive, it won't matter whether they survive or not. That's correct. Okay. And if so, we do so survive the and they point. don't, if we if we do survive and they and they don't, if I if you can't get fuel to the generator, if you can't get fuel to automobiles, if you if you can't have any telecommunications, if none of that's there either, uh, we're hundred percent hardened. I don't know how we're going to come back up. Understand, and okay. and that's part of the system. But if you are not where you can restart, it wouldn't matter how many trucks of fuel showed up, or how many manufacturers are ready to operate. That's correct. Okay. And just, just clarifying what I'm sitting here listening, what's said, uh, if we if we harden the transmission, the, the TND system, that if my house is not hardened or if my business is not hardened or if the supply chain to get the, the entities to the generation, if you don't have generation, you have nothing to transmit. And if you can't send it to me or my business, you have no place to send the power. Is that... Mm -hmm. A good description. Uh, that's a good description. You have to have generation. You have to have fuel of the generation. You have to have load all those customer facilities, and then telecommunications would be a vital part to bringing it all back together. Uh, so, yeah. well, I think what I hear you saying, unless we harden virtually everything, the weakest link then will be the the, the problem. That's correct. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That's part of the of what we have here is to branch out to get the rest of it so that we start over time raising the survivability of the entire nation eventually but if, but the starting point is is the power company uh, what they're providing in terms of power because we don't have that it won't matter whether your house is hardened whether any of the businesses are hardened because they won't have the power to run them so this, that's the starting point it's like the foundation it's like the frame on the car any other questions thank you thank you, thank you. good testimony